The Chino Valley Fire District is constantly in motion. We are working to bring on a strong, sustainable, and safe future for our residents and our organization. We are a fiscally sound organization with more than 130 employees who proudly serve the cities of Chino, Chino Hills, and surrounding unincorporated areas within the Chino Valley. The services we provide range from fire suppression to advanced life support emergency medical care, business and new construction inspections, and public safety education. During the past year, we have responded to more than 10,000 calls for service, conducted more than 3,000 fire inspections, and we have increased our community engagement through a variety of education and outreach events. The Chino Valley Fire District continues to be a leader in our industry through the delivery of exceptional services provided to our community. We are Chino Valley Fire, and this is the 2016 State of the Fire District. The State of the District in my opinion for 2016 for Chino Valley Fire District is that we are a very, very stable organization. The Chino Valley Fire District position in 2016 I would call excellent. We've improved over the years. We've continued to be able to provide a service to our citizens that some agencies haven't and that's I believe because of not only the current board but past board members and their decision to look to the future. 2016 was really the year of implementation of new technologies, new equipment, and new capital improvements. We're solid financially, morale is high, we have a great relationship with the people that we serve, and we're prepared because we continue to offer training to our personnel that will help us deliver the best care possible. This year's rollout of the squads has been something that is fantastic. It is better utilization. Uh, we don't tie up an engine company. And so that improvement this year has been just fantastic. It's been very, very well received. It was well thought out. It's forward thinking. Chino Valley Fire Department has always been customer service oriented. And they've always been on the cutting edge. They had done things that other departments have never done. In uh, late 2015, we created a new position for the district which was the EMS nurse, uh, and that was part of our plan to put more focus on the EMS delivery, and that's tied to the change in the service delivery with the implementation of the paramedic squads. The nurse is part of the QI program. She provides some oversight to that. She reviews patient care records and reports and ensures that our paramedics have the training they need to provide the highest level of care to the patients in the field. So if you look at our response times, I think our response times are to be envied by other agencies. And I'm proud that we're able to do that for not only all of our residents, but both of our cities and the unincorporated area of San Bernardino County that we provide service to. The Chino Valley is poised for, for very great things. And you can see that as you drive through town. You can see development, you can see new families moving in, you can see new business parks, new industrial facilities coming in. And that's a good thing. We've seen our call volume go up. We've seen a need to change the way that we deliver service. And we've been able to quantify all of this, which helps us to ensure that we're putting taxpayer resources into the right place. Our frontline ladder truck is nearing the end of its service life, and our board of directors authorized purchase of a new ladder truck. We anticipate getting a long service life out of it, and it's necessary to meet the needs that we see within our community. We're in constant uh, conversation uh, about uh, uh, equipment, manpower needs. Of course, we want our money's worth and, and they want to be able to provide that service. So we're, like I said, open uh, conversation all the time. One of the things we've done in the past year, we have purchased a building and upgraded the building to a fleet maintenance facility. What this does, this allows us to bring all our fleet maintenance in-house it gives us the capabilities to reduce costs by doing our own maintenance. But what it does for us is it allows us to get that vehicle that needs repair back out into the fleet and responding faster than if we had to send it out for repair. We knew a long time ago that to really get the bang for our buck and be able to control our costs, we had to have our own facility. And with that, we cut down on the time that the engine is out of service. It makes them more available. We've cut down on the, the travel time to and from a facility. It's right here in the district. We don't have to drive to Ranch Cucamonga or San Bernardino, send somebody out with that, send somebody else to go pick them up, bring them back, and then do the same when the engine's ready several days later. In addition to our maintenance facility and the personnel to support it, we also brought in 
IT, and facility maintenance, bringing it in-house so we may better serve the community and the district. Bringing an IT professional and starting an in-house information technology department has really allowed us to take our data collection, our data analysis, our planning to the next level. In the past few years, we've been able to look at newer technologies that gives us the data in more real-time scenarios. We're able to crunch the numbers a little bit better. So we are able to see how the trends are headed and we work very closely with the chief and the staff to look at what those trends are, and where they're headed, to come up with appropriate solutions for the community. We have been participating in electronic patient care system. It's also known as EPCR. It's countywide throughout San Bernardino. And what this system is, it's a platform for our personnel to document patient interaction and care that they provide in the field electronically. Now it tracks all the care from the patient. It's synchronized with the heart monitor and blood pressure. All that information is downloaded and it's actually sent to the hospital in real time. The information will make it to the hospital prior to the patient's arrival. Probably the board's primary responsibility is the money, is financial, and to make sure that we are spending our district money in the most prudent fashion and cost-effective way possible while providing the best service we can to our community. This is our residents' money. We get the money through taxes, so we need to spend it wisely, but we need to provide the service. So in the last five years, we upgraded our systems. We've implemented a new ERP system, which is an enterprise resource planning system that not only incorporates financial data, but it incorporates operational data as well. Additionally, the district has been proactive with long-term forecasting. We have a 25-year financial plan. We actually try to sort of focus on the 10-year horizon with that. That gives us the opportunity to look at things like future facilities, the need for additional fire stations, those sorts of things, so that we can be again planning not only for today and tomorrow, but for the foreseeable future. I like to look at our budget and make sure that we're not overspending or underspending. That's, that's also a danger. If you don't spend the money to get the right kind of equipment and people, you're going to suffer for that. In March of this year, we engaged a pension expert, our actuary that's worked with us for several years, and held a board workshop at our training center for the purposes of projecting pension costs over about the next 25 years. The Public Employees Retirement Act of 2013, also known as PEPRA, uh, provided certain standards and benchmarks for pension reform. I'm pleased to say that with the most recent round of labor negotiations, not only did we achieve full pension reform in accordance with PEPRA, but even with our miscellaneous employee group, we were able to exceed that threshold, which is great. And I uh, really have to credit the board for being proactive in that we're one of a relative handful of agencies on the early adopter side of these types of programs for pre-funding pension obligations. I'm very concerned about the financial impact that anything that we do has on the community. So we want to make sure that everything's being done for the best interest of the community as a whole. While we are still uh, have the need of taking care of our employees and making sure that they have the proper training, the proper equipment that they need, we need to make sure that the community is getting the best bang for the buck. On December 2nd, we found out we all could be victims of terrorism. We had trained professionals there quickly at that incident, mutual aid all around, and our department's trained constantly for the big one, whether that be an earthquake, a terrorist incident, any other disaster we don't know about. They are prepared, they are trained, they're equipped to handle almost anything. Threat in today's world is either terrorism or inspired terrorism or active shooter scenario. We do several trainings throughout the year with our partners with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department and with Chino Police Department where we train together cooperatively. We did have a team that was deployed uh, to the San Bernardino terrorist attack uh, for that very reason. So the last several years our state's had a significant drought uh, not only has that impacted us in terms of availability for water for firefighting purposes, but we see a dramatic increase in the number of fires that start. Uh, we've essentially transitioned from a seasonal uh, fire season or that's, that's driven by weather to nearly a year-round fire season currently. 
Uh, we participate in the Master Mutual Aid System, which is statewide in California. And when those requests come through, we do process those and provide resources as appropriate. Anytime we send those resources out of the area, we are actually reimbursed for those costs. So there's not a direct cost back to our taxpayers. When we need help, we can call on our neighbors for help and they'll provide it. When our neighbors need help, they can call upon us and we'll provide it. Well, I think the future for the fire district is to continue to do what they're doing today. And that's continue to study the needs and wants of this district. And uh, whether it be new fire stations, new equipment, more firefighters, and they should keep that as their priority and work with the city of Chino and Chino Hills to achieve those goals. I think that we're very fortunate in that the, uh, the district takes an active part in our city. They are not just someone there that does a job. They truly are connected at the hip with our residents. They are happy to serve our residents. They're always working on response times. Our residents uh, have grown to appreciate the fire district. Our city could not be more satisfied with the level of service that we get from Chino Valley Fire District. We have good people in the right positions to take care of our residents and their public safety needs. And Chino Valley Fire District is the, one of the top ones in the county to take, do that. I believe that we are providing our residents some of the greatest service available for the money. And I think we do as good of a job, if not better, than anybody else out there in the business. I'm proud of this district. I'm proud of the service we provide. I'm proud of our employees. Our population is starting to grow again. And it's important for us to continue to look in the future as we always have tried to do. What do we need to put in place to serve those community members? And that's what we've been doing for a while and we continue to do. The future for the district is we still have a lot of growth going on, certainly here in Chino Hills and the city of Chino, certainly in the southern end. So we need to make sure that we have the proper resources to help them out if something happens. We're planning for the future needs today. One of the things that I'm proud of is that our district is prepared. We're preparing for those unfortunate circumstances, for the, the world, the changing world. We are upping our training. We're upping our technology. We are getting there, our apparatus, everything that we can offer this community. We're getting there. We're working hard to stay ahead to be proactive and not reactive. As you have seen, we have made changes in how we deliver emergency services. These changes have proven themselves through faster response times and are now providing a platform that allows for greater continuity of patient care. We are making great strides with advancements in technology that improve our efficiency and ensure taxpayer funds are used wisely. Our community is growing and we are working to ensure that the infrastructure is in place to meet the needs of the Chino Valley of the future.